At this time of the recording, it's been almost a week now, and almost two weeks if you're getting this podcast in the feed, since the horrendous shooting in Aurora, Colorado, that left 12 dead and scores injured at the Midnight Batman movie. It's very reminiscent of the beginning of Scream 2, where a person in the ghost face mask slashes people at the movie theater while everyone else thought it was just part of the film. You're probably thinking, wait, this is an entertainment podcast. Why is he bringing me down, man? I don't want to hear about this. But if you could, just bear with me. I need to get a few things off my chest. I'm not going to talk about the shooter himself or the events that surrounded that night. There's enough news for that. You can go just about anywhere to get that. My problem is the coverage of the event. That, I mean, it really has me pissed. You see, every time there's a tragedy, news agencies want to extend their coverage. They want to beat out their competition by having more and giving you more and always being on and on top of everything. And we have the latest. I've worked in news for over a decade and I've seen it multiple times. The problem is, is when they run out of information to print or say at that moment, they pretty much have two options. Either retell what they've already said and people already know, or find somebody to speculate. And they'll get, quote, experts on different subjects to tell you why someone did something to someone else. It's the guns, the movies, the video games, the news, now comics, and even TV. Ah! John Hinckley tried to assassinate then-U.S. President Ronald Reagan in 1981. And it was the film Taxi Driver that drove him to it. Oh, that damn film. Or at least so they say. Sung Hee Cho killed 32 people at Virginia Tech in 2007 because he was reportedly obsessed with the Korean slasher Old Boy. And of course, it was the love of violent films and t- video games in South Park that drove Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold to the massacre at Columbine High School in 1999. The experts will certainly tell you that violent film, TV, video games, such as the ones we talk about regularly on any given episode of the CreeperCast, are responsible for all the violence in the world. If violent media is responsible for these deranged individuals, what about Andrew Kehoe? If you don't know who he is, on May 18, 1927, Kehoe murdered his wife, burned his farm, and blew up the Bath Elementary School in Bath, Michigan. 45 people were killed that day. 38 children, 2 teachers, 4 adults, and Kehoe himself. There were also another 58 injured. If you don't count 9-11... The Bath School Massacre is the deadliest mass murder in U.S. history in 1927. So what influenced Andrew Kehoe? Couldn't have been the media. TV was still in the experimental stage. Films were just starting to get sound. And radio had only been around for a short time. Also, no violent video games. No video games at all, for that matter. As I was watching the coverage of this weekend's shooting, there were more and more experts talking about films being too violent. Some saying we should ban them along with the guns. And were citing studies and special statistics that made for great sound bites on television. It also makes for a convenient truth. You know, them little tidbits of information that as soon as you hear them, you know. That's it. People are lemmings, they say. They see violence, and they act violent. It's simple. It's to the point. And it's just what the news outlets like. John Murray from Kansas State University published a review in 2008 titled, Media Violence, the Effects Are Both Real and Strong. In it, Murray claims that 50 years of research on the effect of TV violence on children leads to the inescapable conclusion that viewing media violence is related to increases in aggressive attitudes, values, and behaviors. 
The only problem with Mr. Murray's theory is that crime has been going down every year for the past 30 years. And violent crime is at the lowest point since 1960. If Murray's research was correct, the U.S. would look like RoboCop land right now. I don't think movie monsters create real ones. If they're going to take down movie violence, then horror films must certainly be at the top of their list. It's by far the most violent, graphic, and real form of filmmaking. It's also the most popular genre of film. Basically, people crave that feeling of being afraid. And murder, death, and dismemberment is the most basic human fear. Horror films and literature serve a very fundamental purpose, to scare and desensitize its viewers. If you get a chance, watch a young child view a scary movie. They'll cover their eyes, then kind of spread them a little bit and peer through them. It's instinctual as humans to overcome your fears. And overcoming fears on screen allows you to overcome them in real life. You get desensitized to the violence on screen, not so you can kill somebody in real life, but so you won't be overwhelmed by the emotion in real horrific situations. We watch zombie films and get an idea of how to react during something like Hurricane Katrina. We watch slasher films to emotionally prepare us to deal with real life victimization. And during the Cold War, They watched giant bugs and spacemen to prepare themselves for the horrors of nuclear fallout. Horror is integrated into human behavior. It was told around the campfire, drawn on cave walls, written in books, and captured on celluloid. After a tragedy, such as the Batman shooting, people shouldn't demand for films to be less violent. They should be thanking these violent filmmakers for giving us a way to vicariously release our pent-up anxieties and prepare us for the times when the shit really does hit the fan. Amen. And there's a lot of things you said there that I think when you had me read this over before, I was like, wow, you actually put together a lot of thoughts that I've had for years. (laughs) And and it was this this horrible thing that happened that that um, caused you to put together some thoughts that I've you know continually thought of and and I go back to people like Stephen King when I think about horror films is he has constantly made the comment about horror films are not there in order to make us more willing to do horrible things horror movies are pure fantasy to take us to fantastical places and are in no way comparable to the horrors of real life. <laughs> No, uh, and that's exactly it. And if anything, it, what what the problem that I have with uh, a lot of these people that I've seen on you know uh, major news networks, and they were talking about violence in movies and how you know it's making people more violent. What they're doing is they're claiming the magic bullet theory of filmmaking, which means, like I said, they think that people are lemmings, you know. How many millions of people watch the second Batman movie and only one person acted out on it? So they're going to demonize a movie that helped, may have helped thousands, if not millions of other people by vicariously letting them uh, face their anxieties through this movie because one person did something. And and you know I I gotta go there because I mean you you mentioned that you weren't willing really, you know willing to dive into this but I'm I'm gonna take the geek route here and go listen people this has nothing to do with the second Batman movie this guy has obviously never seen it <laughs> he has red hair the Joker has never ever ever had red hair number one number two watch the second of the of the Batman movies you know recent of the most recent Batman movies you know the Dark Knight watch that again the Joker never ever killed anybody that wasn't actually a henchman he put people in diabolical situations where they had to choose to kill each other right uh, exactly. but he never ever killed innocent people he forced he his whole goal in life was to force batman to make a decision that would cause innocent people to die this guy had no concept of that 
You cannot compare him. I think it's wrong for the news to continue to pair him. You know, compare him to this type of of a situation. <laughs> I I completely agree. Well, and on top of that, it's there was something that I was going to say. Oh, <laughs> you know the horrors that the people inside of the movie theater faced. You had a lot of I'm going I'm I'm going to call them warriors in there, people mm-hmm. throwing their bodies over loved ones to to shield them. People that reacted very sanely and crawling out. The reason they were able to keep their cool, in my opinion, is because they were able to watch movies such as the horror movies that we talk about, such as the action movies. By facing that fear in literary form, when the real horror came, they were able to not get as emotional because their desensitization was already at a level that they were able to react sanely to the given circumstance. Well, the only thing I want to say about this is, <clears throat> is that, uh, you know, going along with the, the horror movies and the, you guys know, I'm a big horror video game player. You know, I play the resident evils. Um, you know, I'm actually playing the walking dead, uh, the first downloadable version, uh, that's out now. And I have watched horror movies. I remember watching the old black and white stuff with my dad when I was a kid, you know, the, the Saturday double features and, you know, yeah, you know, you do the, you put the, your hands over your eyes, but then you look, um, and you know, I've been watching horror movies for a good 30 years, if not more. And I've been playing video games like, you know, that are extremely violent, you know, for a good 10 or 15 years. And I have yet to go out and slaughter a bunch of people. You know, not that, the, you know, not to, to joke about it. Well, and but, I echo that. I'm a writer. I slaughter people on a daily basis when I'm sitting there writing a story. I have yet to do it physically. <laughs> and granted, you know, there are days when, you know, there, there are people that I would just like, you know, thought goes through my head, you know, how would you do, you know, if I put you in a scene from Saw, you know, let's play a game. Um, or, you know, yes, I would like to beat you upside the head profusely with a blunt object. But, you know, because of f- just family values and, and how I was brought up and, and the fact that, you know, I'm desensitized t- to a point to this sort of stuff, obviously I don't do it. Um, and I guess, you know, it's, there are days that I get so ticked off at people just for their plain stupidity that one of my cathartic releases is to come home, throw in Resident Evil, and just blow the crap out of a bunch of zombies. Right. <laughs> there you or, go. And you are talking or, about zombies. Well, well it, right. But, you know, even I'll play Grand Theft Auto, you know, because it's, it's a vicarious... I know I'm not doing anything wrong when I climb up to the top of a building and snipe people for half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, and that's what, I, that's what I'm trying to say is through the movies, through these video games more than not it's actually stopping violence than creating violence because it is taking somebody that does you know may legitimately want to create violence against somebody else may want to kill somebody else they can come home and they can pop in a horror movie like saw and you know imagine whoever it is in that position or do like you do and rather than you know shooting them in the head for real they go online and they shoot zombies. Yeah. And that's where every time I, I heard one of these quote unquote experts say that, you know, and this is really one of the, the we haven't seen this in the last few times. We did in Columbine because, you know, when they searched the kid's house, they found a bunch of violent video games. But especially in this one, because he claimed to be the Joker, he claimed to. He had a bunch of Batman paraphernalia uh, at his house. Everyone, all of these experts automatically make the jump to, it's Batman's fault. 
it's <laughs> it's it's the fault of him, you know, that he got so into this. Well, you can't blame the creators of an art form for somebody that is schizophrenic for an inter for an interpretation for and, a schizophrenic liter- interpretation. Yeah, and that's and that's really what this is all coming down to is that we're we're here standing for the the horror and violent film and violent game genre if you will. I mean, we have we have people out there reading these things and stopping our children from doing things and you know, you know, playing these games and seeing these movies, which ultimately isn't their job. It's our job as parents to decide these things and to educate and to help educate. And on top of that, the de- desensitization and really what this all comes down to is this this situation was not caused by a movie. This situation was not caused by gun control. This situation was not caused by anything other than one very loose cannon who took everything wrong and did something ridiculous. This is really a ridiculous situation that cost a lot of people's lives senselessly and ridiculously. This is a sad, sad day for that reason alone. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Right. 